Hello, my name is Carol Mae Whittick, spiritual life coach and your host of Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations. And this week is episode 9 of my creativity series. This week the topic is Mastery, Reaching Greatness. Get good, become better and be your best. From Robert Greene. Mastery is not a function of genius or talent. It is a function of time and intense focus applied to a particular field of knowledge. Before we delve into this episode, which is the final episode in this creativity series, I just want to share with you some ways that I can support you. If you want to delve deeper into any of the topics on the Her Inspirations podcast, then I encourage you to join the mailing list and you'll receive an accompanying email and resources for you to explore as you deepen your own personal journey. Or if you've always wanted to be heard in the world, and that may mean that you are launching your own podcast, putting yourself out on the internet a little bit more, public speaking, or just being more vocal in your everyday life, I have created Your Awakened Voice for you. This is my course which uses my holistic approach, acknowledging the intricate connection between physical body, mind and spirit. This is a course that empowers you to discover and develop your voice. Or if you're ready to work with me on a one-to-one basis, if you know there's a purpose to your life, my purpose is here to support you. And in particular, I work with women over 40. I'm helping you to trust your intuition, rediscover your innate creativity and use your decades of wisdom to design a purposeful life. All the links to these are in the show notes. From Michelangelo. If people knew how hard I worked to get my mastery, it wouldn't seem so wonderful at all. Yes, it's the final week in this creativity series and this week the topic is mastery. So creative mastery is the ongoing process of honing your craft, expanding your skills and deepening your understanding of creativity. It's your perpetual journey of continuous growth and evolution. And learning is a lifelong pursuit. Often people think when they leave school in their teens that that's it. But life is an endless opportunity to learn. And as long as we remain ever curious in the pursuit of our creative mastery, we will continue to learn, we will continue to grow. And having that growth mindset allows you to stay open to new ideas, to new perspectives and to new experiences so that you can have all the tools to innovate. So how do you get there? How do you get to be on the path to your mastery? You be deliberate in your practice. You remain committed to your efforts to improve your skills, to expand past your present boundaries and to decide that any challenges that you encounter will be learning opportunities for you. I encourage you also to be patient and also remain positive because as you go forward, you will face those inevitable setbacks. There will be failures or perceived failures, or you may feel that you're experiencing some creative blocks. This is when I encourage you to have faith, have grace with yourself and persevere because you're always growing and you will emerge stronger and more resilient. Remember that a seed is planted and we see nothing for a very long time and then eventually we start to see the shoots come through, the fruits of our labour. And also delay gratification. So put the working now. Say no to any short-term gains or short-term distractions and knowing that in the end the long-term prize is yours. And oftentimes it will be sweeter than anything that you can imagine now. Remain open to new inspiration and how that can impact and affect your creativity and see how it evolves over time. The path to your mastery is a constant refining of your creative voice. And as you explore new creative territories, you will probably be adopting to changing context and changing uses and spaces for your work. Also remain open to valued feedback. And I spoke about feedback in a previous episode. And welcome any mentorship that you encounter on your pursuit of creative mastery. 
choose to learn only from the best, the best people that you're able to have access to. Luckily, we live in an age where even if we don't have physical access to the best, they will have written books, created courses or have coaching programs that we can learn from and improve and expand. Ask questions as well. We never know it all. And often people fear asking questions. There's this fear that they're asking a stupid question. There are no stupid questions. Questions always lead to expanded knowledge and more clarity. Asking questions will show that you're curious. By remaining in that curiosity, you are open for uh, additional information. You may find out something that is the opposite of what you believe. And you may not even agree with the answer to the question. It may be the opposite of what you expected. But keep in mind that There is power in somebody being vulnerable and open enough to ask a question. And in the answers, whether you agree or not, you'll you'll get a feeling, you'll get a sense and an understanding about what that response is. And you are open to try what you're shown and you're able to see if it works for you and brings you to the place that you want to be. And if it doesn't work for you, then you can respectfully decide that that's not part of what you need. But at least, you know, instead of what many will do is ignorantly dismiss something without fully understanding what it could possibly do for you. And also be around people who are where you want to be so that you can be inspired by their stories, by their journeys. So you can learn from their mistakes, as it were, or you can also collaborate with these people. By collaborating, this is stretching your abilities. It's seeing where your work can fit. It's also a real exercise in in managing your ego, Because especially when we're doing anything creative, and as I said, creativity is encapsulating any kind of expression. When we're coming into a collaborative situation, we'll have quite a few ideas about what it is that we're able to bring and what is right. But sometimes in collaboration, it means that our ideas are not necessarily fitting for that point of view and we need to take maybe a more backseat role in whatever that project may be and then our skills may be useful in other areas. So that in itself shows how open and flexible you can be with your work and understanding and accommodating of other people's input within the collaboration. And again, this is going to accelerate your own growth as a person and your own growth and development as a creative. Be also open to experiment. What can you do that has not been tried before? What does your market need? Where are the blind spots that you feel can be filled? Can history inform where you want to go? Is there something that's traditional that can be resurrected or can be tweaked and refined? What are you seeing? What is the market asking of you as well? Sometimes when it comes to bringing something out to the world, is it something that people truly need or want? Are they asking for it or are you assuming it as well? And there's that balance between being innovative to the point of bringing people up to the next level or being so innovative that they don't even understand the idea. You can only be the judge of that by taking the risk, putting yourself out there, listening, collaborating and also refining and then embrace failure. So the question is, is there ever really any failure Or are you simply eliminating the ways that things are not working for you? In my mind, true failure is only a failure if you quit. When you reach what you perceive to be a dead end, something's not working for you anymore. There's a question there and it's asking yourself, is there a way that you can iterate and use what you've learned to then go into and expand and find the space where your creativity is more useful? And at this point, I want to share the uh, story of a colossal failure in the first instance that turned out to be a roaring success. I think by now most of us are familiar with the post-it note, those little colourful squares and 
They've evolved into many different shapes and sizes now. They just have a tiny strip of adhesive on the back. You can stick them on books and then you can peel them off paper and they don't leave any marks and they don't ruin the books that they've been stuck to. The birth of the post-it note started in the late 60s, 1960s, when a 3M researcher, which 3M is the original company that launched the post-it note, and one of the researchers there accidentally created a very weak adhesive when he was attempting to make a much stronger one. But it wasn't until 1974, so a good 14 years later, when another scientist within the organisation, Arthur Fry, was looking at his hymn book and he wanted to have a bookmark that would attach to the page but then not leave any residue behind. Then six further years passed they had several prototypes and then the post-it note was introduced to the rest of the world. And as I found out in my research, fell out of patent in the, in the 1990s, which is why we see the original post-it notes and then multiple versions thereof. But that's where it started and we can agree that that mistake turned out to be an amazing success. There may be a failure that you're experiencing that is maybe slightly ahead of your time or that needs an additional collaborator with a specific issue that your mistake is perfect for. So by embracing failure and iterating on original ideas, we can find a breakthrough that will create uh, innovation and growth and then celebrate your milestones and your progress. And it's natural also to be always comparing yourself, your position, your present position with the goal that you've not yet reached. And while it's important to keep moving forward, also don't forget to measure how far you've come. When you're constantly taking steps forward, when you're constantly growing, you are making exponential shifts in your ability that you may be overlooking. And this is why you feel so despondent. Remind yourself often to just check out where you came from and see that you're no longer where you were. That means you're closer to where it is that you're going. So the creative series, the creativity series is ended for now. There are never ending aspects of creativity and I know that I will revisit this series later in the year and I encourage you to step into your creativity, to choose your medium or mediums that you can play with and learn and know that you were born to create. Uh, Embrace the process of discovery, have fun on your journey, allow yourself to daydream, to night dream, to attempt the impossible and leave your indelible and unique mark on the world. And as you endeavour deeper into your mastery, the awareness of yourself as a spiritual being becomes undeniable to you and your trust and your reliance in that part of yourself will grow you will see how that positively will impact on your human experience and brings you more confidence and brings you more peace. You see and understand the lesson in all of your experiences and that you'll use the shifts that you're led to as a result to enrich your life expression. You'll honour your unique wisdom and I pledge and I hope that you'll embody that. To close from Oscar Wilde, to regret one's own experiences is to arrest one's own development. To deny one's own experiences is to put a lie into the lips of one's own life. It is no less than a denial of the soul. Thank you so much for joining me on this series, Creativity, and I hope that it inspired you to explore more about the different aspects of your own creativity and I would love to hear back from you how this has created any shifts or brought up any questions. If you do have any more questions about aspects of creativity do reach out to me and you can find out more about me on my website it's carolmaywittick.com c-a-r-o-l-m-a-e-w-h-i-t-t-i-c-k.com you can also reach me on instagram kazmik c-a-z-m-i-c-k and Carol May Whittick on LinkedIn and Facebook. Also, if you are enjoying this series or any of the episodes of her inspirations, I would also greatly appreciate that you leave a review on the platform that you're listening to. So until next week and a new episode and a new series, take care.
Thank you. Bye.